80-90% of the mines in Alabama are union. They are not having these issues with silica dust because their union safety committees are ensuring that this is not happening. It's primarily in the Appalachian coal fields where the miners unions have been decimated. The U.S. Department of Labor yesterday on 30 June announced a proposal by its Mine Safety and Health Administration to amend current federal standards to protect the nation's miners from health hazards related to exposure to, resp to respirable crystalline silica or silica dust. Uh, the proposed rule change will ensure miners have at least the same level of protections as workers in other industries. Uh, this is important because as as others, but but most recently and, and relevantly to us, a uh, friend of the show, Kim Kelly, did a very deep investigation for In These Times. I could not recommend more reading her piece in In These Times. Um, I very rarely cry when I read, uh, uh, and I did when I read this piece. Um, uh, you know, some mitigating circumstances could be that I was running on two hours of sleep and on a 5 a.m. flight, uh, but <laughs> you know, but still, I I cried. It was very, I mean, it really disgusting what uh, the coal industry is putting miners through. And the long and short of it is that black lung is on the rise after uh, really declining through the second half of the 20th century to uh, uh, very significantly. And and in the since 2000 or so, it has continued to rise until now more than one in eight miners who have been working in the industry for more than 20 years have black lung. Mm. One in eight. We're back up to where we were in the middle of the 20th century, if I'm remembering right. Uh, I mean, really a lot of backtracking. Um, some of the differences with the silica dust is like silica dust didn't used to be an issue, apparently. Um, it was primarily coal dust that was... Um, creating black lung and so all of the rules and regulations were kind of really surrounding coal dust and as the coal veins have been um, extracted they have to mine uh, deeper and wider to get what is left of the coal in these veins and so they are uh, like grinding up against more non-coal stuff, more stuff that will create the silica dust. And it's getting in their lungs, and because the regulations aren't there for it, they're actually, um, in other industries, in construction industries, because silica is a known hazard, I mean, it's, it's known that this is bad for you. In construction industries, you can have, if I'm remembering like, right, like 10% of the amount of silica dust in the air as coal miners can have. So coal miners are inhaling like 10 times the allowable limit of silica dust that a construction worker has. Uh, so it's, it's, it's very bad. It's, I mean, it's killing people, literally killing people. Uh, 30 and 40 and, uh, you know, 30 and 40 year olds with black lung, which is not curable. Uh, it's not reversible, uh, very bad stuff. And so, uh, there's a rule to change, uh, um, the rules surrounding silica exposure from MSHA, the Mine Safety and Health Administration. Um, additionally, Kim reported uh, 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 last week that prior to this uh, change coming out, which came out on, on June the 30th, on June 22nd, a group of U.S. senators representing major coal mining states sent a letter to the Biden administration's Office of Management and Budget Director Shalanda Young demanding answers about a proposed rule from MSHA to update the respirable crystalline silica standard. Uh, these senators being Joe Manchin, Sherrod Brown, Bob Casey, John Fetterman, Mark Warner, and Tim Kaine. And notice... Not a single Republican here. You know, I mean, obviously, like, look, we just did a first half of the show. Our first half of the show was talking about the failures of the Biden administration regarding uh, the CHIPS Act. OK, so, you know, I don't think anybody's going to uh, accuse us of being apologists for Democrats or, or you wouldn't be you wouldn't do so if you were in good faith. But this is I mean, this is real, right? There are no Republicans that are fighting to make sure that uh, coal miners don't get black lung again. I, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just it's disgusting. And of course, none of Alabama senators are there, despite the fact that Alabama senators also represent thousands of coal miners. But they don't care. They just as soon as you have black lung. But one of the things that, that Kim's reporting 
uh, from last month showed was that in coal mining states that had higher union density, which, you know, funnily enough, the coal mining industry in Alabama is heavily unionized. If I remember right, it's like something like 80, 90 percent of the mines in Alabama are union. Um, they are not having these issues with silica dust because uh, uh, their union safety committees are ensuring that this is not happening. It's primarily the issue is arising in the Appalachian coal fields where the UMWA, where, where uh, you know, the miners unions have been kind of decimated by, uh, you know, in some cases like literal warfare. Um, so back to this piece from last week. Uh, there, the, those senators added to a chorus of organizations who have been calling on the federal government to enact such a rule for decades, a coalition of 28 groups, including, of course, the United Mine Workers of America, Appalachian Citizens Law Center, the National Black Lung Association, and Appalachian Voices sent a June 29 letter interrogating the rulemaking delay. And so, like I said, it came out yesterday, uh, this proposed rule, so it's not gone into effect yet, it's a proposed rule, and uh, MSHA explains that unhealthy levels of silica, a carcinogen, and exposures over time cause severe illnesses, including silicosis, progressive massive fibrosis, non-malignant respiratory disease, such as emphysema, kidney disease, and lung cancer. Exposure to mixed coal mine dust that contains respirable Crystalline silica can lead to the development of coal workers' pneumon, all commonly known as black lung disease, multi dust, black lung disease, and progressive massive fibrosis. So this is you know this is real and it's getting worse. Um, in Kim's piece, she mentions that the current standard allows miners to be exposed to as much as 100 micrograms of silica dust per cubic meter, which is twice as high, not 10 times as high as I said earlier, apologies, twice as high as the silica limit for workers in all other industries. The new rule would cut that down by half to 50 micrograms and finally catch up to the recommendation from uh, NIOSH that they made in 1974. MSHA sent the proposed rule off to OMB in January 2023, where it's languished ever since. It's now been six months, roughly twice as long as a normal review period, and the senators are demanding answers. Um, so they got the answer yesterday that it's been proposed now. And, uh, uh, and so comments are open, um, and, and here's hoping that this, this uh, rule goes through. In addition to reducing the exposure limit, the proposal also includes other requirements to protect miners' health, such as exposure sampling and medical surveillance at no cost for metal and non-metal miners. It would also replace outdated requirements for respiratory protection with a standard that reflects the latest advances in respiratory protection technologies and practices. So, um, good news there and, and looking forward to it going into effect for sure. Absolutely. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project. And you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm. 